Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Tata Nexon facelift which has new trim levels. There's the Smart which is the base variant, Pure, Creative and this one is the Fearless and the colors are actually matched to the variants or the trim levels. So this particular color is only available in the Fearless trim which is kind of cool looking color because this is purple. But before we start, let me show you this awesome car perfume from Involve Your Senses. This is the Involve Elements Aura. It's a strong black icy perfume. It's a blended fragrance. It brings instant freshness in the car. Whenever you spray it now, it really refreshes the cabin and your mood as well. Get yours with a 10% discount using coupon code FASTBEAM. Click right there. Now coming to the next one, it has actually got a proper facelift with a lot of inspiration from the curve. And boy, oh boy, it looks fantastic. Straight away, let's open the engine bay. This is the petrol, of course, and it gets insulation there. You can feel the vibrations, you can see the vibrations and the engine bay is quite empty as well. But whoopsie doopsie doo, that was quite a fall. The key is the same as before. So lock the car, unlock the car. This is to turn on the lights and this is to open the boot of the vehicle. The key is actually quite nice, so nothing to complain on that front. And a little bit of curvish here, like the curve design language has come here. Firstly, you get the Tata logo here. They have de the car and you get this piano black finishing. Dynamic swipe indicators. And it is also dynamic here, which is kind of nice. No, it's not really dynamic here, but it swipes from here, which is absolutely phenomenal. On the other side, of course, is the DRL. So this is the DRL of the vehicle. This is a projector light. So this is actually the main light. And these are fog lights, which are two sort of melting cube treatment. You get two parking sensors at the front. Yeah, you don't get four here, one here, one here. You get a front parking camera. You can see the horn. So the grill has been revised. The bumper has been revised as well. And it also gets an air curtain here because there's also an EV version of this car. It looks really very nice in this particular shade. I really like it. The alloy wheels are again very EV specific. The tire size 215616. So this is actually plastic treatment here. Yeah, some plastic treatment has been added. But honestly, this car doesn't need such alloy wheels, but they have given it anyway. There's a camera here. It gets a 360 degree parking camera. The side profile is very much similar to what it was before. 208 mm of ground clearance, which is good enough. Four meters is the length of the vehicle. You get a request sensor here, but you do not get a request sensor on the other side. Sort of sloping roof line. These don't seem functional. Oh my God, I am able to shake the car. Look at the strength of a person who has not slept all night. And that is the shark fin antenna. I love this purple color. Yeah, it really suits this car somehow. At the rear, again, you will notice that the lights have been revised. Firstly, kind of looks like the i20, doesn't it? And then it gets a connected tail light treatment. All LED lights at the front, all LED lights at the rear, not rarely, because this is a bulb. Yeah, this is actually halogen. It's actually ringing inside because of the parking sensors. So this is for the reverse light. This is the reflector treatment, which is here as well. Parking sensors have been given. Again, two parking sensors, so some cost cutting there. Says Nexon right there. Get a reverse parking camera right here. And the exhaust is actually placed here, a bit hidden, but that's fine. Where is the rear wiper washer? It's not there. No, it is there because obviously Tata Motors owns Land Rover. It's a very Range Rover type treatment where the rear wiper is actually hidden. So it's not just Hyundai which copies this. Even Tata Motors copies its own brand. Let's open the boot before that. You can see the Tiger. Lot of Easter eggs. Stop ringing, will you? Let's open the boot. Why is it not opening? Yeah, there it opens. Requires some effort, of course. And the DCA variant actually gets a subwoofer here, hook for 3 kgs weight and 12 volt charging socket, 6 kgs, oh my god, 12 kgs, you can carry a lot of subsi here, boot has also improved in terms of size slightly, I believe, spare wheel is not an alloy, in fact, this is the jack, let me raise it, yeah, steel wheel and 195, 60, 16, the tire size of this car is 215, so 20mm shorter, I don't know why, parcel shelf obviously you get here, says Tata here. So Tata logo has been splashed wherever they felt it's necessary. They have done it. Let's just shut this. Build quality is similar to what it was before. And because the key is in my pocket, it's ringing right now. Fuel goes in right here, says E20 compliant. And this is obviously petrol. By the way, if you notice, 
dynamic swipe indicators here as well yeah crazy amount of features in this car rear spoiler tata motors has really worked a lot in terms of adding more features to this car and the seats have been revised they are more comfortable now definitely more comfortable and the center passenger does not get a head only which is kind of sad we get a center armrest with twin cup holders seats are actually quite nice isofix child seat mounts everybody gets a proper seat belt and also has the seat belt alarm so in case someone is not worn a seat belt at the rear it will obviously ring but it's not like maruti cars it will be able to sense if someone is sitting or not even if you keep a bag it's not going to ring so it's very smart there space inside is actually quite good just like always foot room is fantastic knee room is good leg room is good under thigh support is average not that great and head room is just about adequate for someone as tall as me it's actually scooping out from here so that really helps a hook here handle to hold on to a hook here as well it now gets six airbags across the range and height adjustable seat belts too no magazine holders yeah that is a bit of a weird thing that there are no pockets right there ac vents at the rear fast charger usb c usb a charging socket as well no 12 volt here this is slightly humpy here that's not the right way to say it but there's a slight hump here so three people are not really going to be comfortable because obviously the cabin is not really very wide says airbag here as well that's kind of nice and uh, the dashboard looks so much better because of the new steering wheel and the new screen as well so certain changes really help twitter here door pockets are decent size at the rear speaker placement here jbl and i love the treatment it's actually soft enough it's not very hard it's not very soft also but it's soft enough i would say this is hard of course and you can recline this seat so there it is 60 40 split if you want to increase the boot carrying capacity which is kind of nice listen to this shuts with a proper thud which actually brings me to the co-passenger side first and foremost there's a hook right here so you can carry more sabzi if you so wish and this is to turn off the passenger airbag and the glove box you have to press this button to open it it's quite big there's a tray here this space here and there's of course the tiger right there with place to keep your cups i don't know why cup holder is here pen holder is here some storage space here so very nicely and practical glove box in this car seats are really very nice i like the seats they've been revised very comfortable but they could be slightly bigger i think there is the reflector treatment right there and an umbrella holder as well bottle holder door pockets are again decent size they are big enough so do you like the design of the car i think they have done a fab job with the front the rear could be a lot better and then obviously it keeps ringing again and again and again and again which actually brings me to this sensor which is for the rain sensing wipers wipers are also quite nice in this car it's got so many features now na it really will blow your mind so first things first let's get inside it has got a feature called remote start now so using the app you can actually turn on the vehicle and you can also turn on the air conditioning of this car so that's also been added some warning about tire pressure has been written here with tire pressure recommendation you get a proper dead pedal here you don't get that hook on this side some storage space here as well and this is the same as the other side it's illuminated for the driver side and it's a okay it doesn't really work all the time but one touch down and one touch up power window for the driver not for the others this is the same as before which is the adjustment of the outside rear view mirrors overall quality is decent only thing is fit and finish could be better slight quality here and there has gone for a toss seats are very nice and comfortable and both the front seats are height adjustable as well this is for seat ventilation you have got three settings for the same so both the front seats get seat ventilation of course and there's this is dummy i don't know why paddle shifters are there for this particular variant and as soon as i shut the car you will notice the camera also moved so yeah when you turn on the indicator let me actually turn off the light so you can see the screen which becomes brighter it has got a blind view monitor so depending on which indicator you give it actually changes the view camera view again fantastic feature to have bit of a glitch with this particular thing automatic headlights automatic wipers rain sensing of course this is the engine start button and there's a new screen right here 10.25 inch screen here 10.25 inch screen right there as well this is auto dimming so it's got aira connected car with around 30 features it's got voice commands and what not and there is a mirror here but this is so useless now because it really does not block anything so i don't know why they have done it like that same is the case here as well you don't get a mirror here at all but you do get a strap so that you can slot in your tow receipts it says gently turn the steering wheel to release the steering lock and all those things have been written right here of course light placement here on the top and 
passenger airbag notification has been given right here. So what do you think about the dashboard design? The steering wheel is actually adjustable only for height, not for reach. So that's kind of disappointing. Oh God, this is hard. That's what she said. There's a tweeter placement here. So it's only this particular car, which is a DCA, which gets a nine speaker system from JBL. Otherwise it gets an eight speaker system. And then here you've got multiple modes. There are eight modes actually, which you can decide how you want the audio quality to be. So you can just change it accordingly. <laughs> Tata, sunroof kholo. All right, sunroof khol rahe hain. There it is. It works in multiple languages, of course. And I think this is the maximum that opens. This thing has gone inside. Let me close this. And now this thing will come out. This is a bit flimsy. I mean, it makes some sound. And there's some gap here. So it's not properly cut as such. Yeah, that could have been slightly better, but it's got voice commands which work in multiple languages, by the way. So this screen is actually quite slick and the color of the screen actually matches the color of the interior. So there's this purple treatment. There's this sort of carbon fiber finish for carbon fiber, of course. This is soft touch material, hard materials down, lot of piano black finishing here. So this is the handbrake. There's a wireless charging pad here. This does not move ahead or behind. There's some storage space here. Yeah, this is decent. And there's this magnet on which it actually clips on. This is the drive mode selector, which is the same as before. They could have given it a more subtle and smaller one. And this gear lever seems to have come from Jaguar Land Rover cars. So that's kind of nice to use. Yeah. And here you get a 12 volt charging socket. You get a USB A, you get a USB C as well, which is a fast charger. And obviously it gets Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay connectivity, both of which are wireless. And it actually shows you the navigation here in the instrument cluster, which is also 10.25 inch screen. However, if you connect Apple CarPlay, it will only show Apple Maps. If you connect Android Auto, it will show you Google Maps as well. And Google Maps is obviously way better than Apple Maps. So that's something which they're saying is restriction from Apple, unfortunately. Here in the screen, there's so much to play around with. For starters, there is no ambient light. So yeah, that's the only standard color which you get. And that color is matched to the color of the car's interior, that is. And you can just browse through like this. It gets an AQI monitor along with the PM 2.5 air filter. I'm not too sure how good it works. I mean... All the cars are having it, quite a lot of cars are having it, but sometimes the screen is a bit laggy, a little bit slow, and there are a lot of functions inside. Amazon Alexa, AQI monitor, JBL modes, which I already showed you. You can share your location, there's sound demo, Tata assist, surround view monitor, voice assistant, what three words, navigation. All of this is there. In fact, if I say Tata assist, it will actually call the call center to help me with whatever I want right now. So there it's initiating the call. It's going to call and let's see how long does that take. Come on, make that fast, will you? Yeah, it's going to keep working that way. Till that time, let's see this instrument cluster, which has got multiple views and whatnot. So here you can browse through a lot of stuff like notifications, settings, trip information, and obviously tire pressure monitor as well. And once I get into a particular setting now, I can browse up and down through that. So here, distance to empty. Let me see trip A, trip B. It's saying eight kilometers per liter right now. Instant fuel efficiency is there. Here I can see tire information, I can see power and torque meters, service reminder and whatnot. So yeah, it has a compass as well, a Tata car having a compass, mm, interesting. And multiple views, so I can just change the views like that. Yeah, that's kind of nice. This screen is actually quite good, I like it. So these are actually the controls for the screen, these two buttons and then this is for the cruise control system. These are for the audio system and also for voice commands and the horn. Horn is decent, says airbag right here. Now, let's actually get into reverse or I can just click on the surround view monitor. This is the 360 degree parking camera, which has got four cameras, of course, and you can see all those four cameras zoom in and zoom out as well. But it is actually the side view, which is also available by pressing a button. And then there's this back view, which is available as well. However, the 3D view is the best in this car, but attention to detail is a bit poor because I am in a purple car. Why am I seeing a white car? And there is no sunroof here. Did Toyota actually make the system? Probably, yes. But it's actually very slick. The camera quality is quite impressive for a Tata car. Park brake engaged, please release. There I have released it. Check surroundings for safety. So it does give me a lot of information, unnecessary one. But look at this camera system. Wow, 360 degree parking camera. Tata Motors has really improved the infotainment system in this car, which is really impressive. Only thing is if the touch control was better now. It would have been really very nice. But yeah, it gets the job done. You can add more widgets if you so wish. And the regular bits which you would expect in a car, all of that is here. Works decently well. Yeah, I kind of like this. This screen is also quite nice. And that actually brings me to the fact that my knee is actually touching right here. 
Now this is also touch control which they have added. So AC control. There's something known as express cooling. I press this button. It actually express opens the window. Turned on. Windows may roll down. Yeah. So there the window actually rolls down for express cooling and the AC goes on full blast as well. Let me turn off the AC. Very nice feature to have. Thankfully, I have physical control here for temperature and for fan control. This is for the front fog lights. And this is to open the boot, this is to lock the vehicle, and this is for the 360 degree parking camera. These touch controls are not that intuitive, and obviously you can see a lot of reflection also. It's kind of reflective as well. Anyways, let's shut this particular window, and I am going to turn off the car. And when I do that, you will notice the Tata logo vanishes. Yeah, Please engage. Engage. Park brake and take key out. So yeah, it has got lot of these voice commands, which is quite interesting. Voice alerts, I would say. And when I turn on the car, there you see the Tata. Logo will actually eliminate right here, and then in the screen it says Tata Motors. It says Ira, which is the connected car thing which they have, and there it does this whole swipe up thingy as well. Quite interesting, yeah. <laughs> Ton of features in this car really surprises you. But it's time for me to actually get out, so I'm just going to get out. Turn off the oh, okay automatic headlights, anyways. So I have to turn it off because otherwise I can't really see the screens in this car, which actually is auto close. Don't know. I have to shut this. Now I'll show you a very unique feature about this car. So here I actually turn off the vehicle, and now it's going to shock you or surprise you by what Tata Motors has actually done. So when I unlock the car, there, if you notice one thing, it has this light signature, which is absolutely insane. A light signature in a Tata car is something you would never expect, but it has it. I am blown over. Look at this again. I can do this again and again and again because this is something I really never expected to see in a Tata car. And obviously, when you lock or unlock the vehicle, the mirrors also go in and out. The mirrors are new, by the way. And this light signature is also there at the rear. So when I unlock the car, there you notice the light signature works here as well. Oh my God! A full swipe up thing. The light blinks. I am really genuinely impressed by what Tata Motors has done with this car. But in terms of the mechanicals, it's the very same as before. So let's start driving right away. Right, we're all set to go. First thing, air conditioning off. I change the drive mode to sport mode. City. Arey sport me aja ban. Economy drive. Arey sab me aagi, lekin sport me nahi aagi. Sport drive mode activated. Thank you. And uh, there is no button to turn off the traction control. Unfortunately, we get into drive mode. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. Man, this engine is driving to 2,500 rpm, and it's actually going between two and two and a half thousand rpm. Hazard lights off. These buttons are like very fumbly. Okay, now it's not driving anymore, and off we go. Oh my God! There's a rumbler. Whoopsie doopsie do. And now we are in a tunnel, so you can see the Tata logo looks really very nice. Actually, quite fantastic. And I've turned on the navigation, so you can see that as well. Can we actually get into the driver rearview monitor? Is there a thing like that in this car? I don't know because I yeah, it is there. The buttons are so bad because these touch buttons now they don't really feel that reassuring to press. So now we have the driver rearview monitor on. And the engine is, as always, disappointing here. Why? Well, firstly, uh, Tata's engines, the petrol ones, are not that great. The diesels are complete opposite. Fantastic. We'll talk about the diesel later. But this is a 1.2 liter Revotron petrol engine, three cylinder. Yeah, still three cylinders, and it produces 120 PS of power and 170 newton meters of torque on paper. Oh my God! I didn't even apply heavy brakes, and the sound from the tires actually scared this aura away, and its aura went away to the left. Anyways, this engine isn't that punchy because on paper it's fantastic. Yeah, it's really fantastic on paper, but out on the road it just doesn't have the grunt. Firstly, it has got turbo lag lower down, and the dual clutch automatic transmission known as DCA makes matters worse because obviously it doesn't let you launch that aggressively. So there's that. Initial lag here; it doesn't get off the line quickly, and then the mid range is nice and strong, and there's no top end. It redlines at just 5,500 rpm, which is quite less. Zero to 100 kilometers per hour takes a lethargic 13 seconds. Yeah, this is quite slow, and the gearbox is also very good on paper because it's got machine learning. It's shift by wire. It's a wet clutch, and it has got a lot of this tech self healing mechanism and whatnot. But it does not shift fast enough. It just does not shift fast enough. It's quite easy going in terms of shifts, which is kind of disappointing. 
something because it kind of feels like a faster AMT. Now, obviously, when compared to the Altros's uh, DCT gearbox or the DCA gearbox, this is definitely better. So they have tweaked it, and obviously, this one is the turbocharged petrol engine. The Altros gets the DCA with the NA engine, which is more hopeless, taking 17 seconds to go from zero to 100 kilometers per hour, which is very slow indeed. And every time I go into the throttle, there's this very big fat lag. Engine is refined lower down, gets very 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 vocal higher end of the rev range. So I can hear a lot of the engine noise and red line comes in at just 5500 rpm so there is no top end there is no low end there is only slight mid range which is good the mid range performance is actually quite nice here but brakes are so weird in this car i mean why are the tires screeching on like 50 percent braking that's something i don't understand at all it's a commotion here today i don't know what's happening but anyway steering is light it's quite light actually but i just wish now they rush up the 1.2 liter this thing direct injection engine which is going to be coming in the curve so once they get it into the next one the next one is going to be a complete package i just cannot recommend the petrol engine especially for enthusiasts because it just doesn't have the grant i mean it gets the job done there's no denying the fact i love this thing but it's a bit laggy but that map is so amazingly done yeah it's really very nice as long as it works should not say pre-production hardware not for resale which it is telling me at the moment which is a bit of an issue right now and uh, yeah <laughs> so ride quality isn't that great you know why because it's on the stiffer side so low speed ride is not good but once you speed up the ride feels better monocoque chassis of course the body roll is well contained there is roll there's definitely roll and the steering is as always fantastic the steering is actually quite a surprise yeah it has good amount of feel and feedback it weighs up decently well at high speeds by the way the glove box is cool i forgot to tell you because it's so big now i didn't even realize where is the cooling thing in this glove box on is nice yeah but you press it here and it's going to make a proper fingerprint magnet cid is going to love this panel for sure and you can put a playstation here just kidding you can't you need a scratch guard here because of the fingerprints which are definitely going to be coming with time did i turn on the cruise control i don't know accidentally i press a lot of buttons in tata cars and i don't like the ergonomics i think the steering is just too high and too front and then the switches here the levers for indicator and all are also a little weirdly calibrated they feel already too high up so yeah these things are not that great let's use the wiper good amount of spray and the wipers also work really well in this car the engine cannot be insulated this three cylinder engine is vocal and how top speed i think is 150 kilometers per hour but you have to really stand to make on the accelerator pedal to make a quick overtake because it's slow it's really very slow it just does not feel fast enough let me just change the view there it is another view I love the way they have been able to integrate the maps into the instrument cluster but unfortunately you have to have an Android phone to use Google Maps otherwise you're stuck with Apple Maps which will take you to a location where you don't want to go because I remember once I was using Apple Maps in Goa and I reached to a very weird spot where I thought an Omni would come any moment thankfully I had to run away from there but anyways as I see it this car drives the same as before so there's no difference when compared to the previous model the BS 6.2 model which had a slight changes here and there they have just tweaked the suspension a bit for the added weight because of the added features the weight has obviously gone up fuel efficiency 8 kilometers per liter is what it's saying right now but you drive it like a nut it's going to return 5 7 kilometers per liter but drive aram se now it can return almost 10 kilometers per liter so not very efficient and obviously this is a very old school turbo petrol engine and it shows it just does not have the refinement it just does not have the performance it just does not have the fuel efficiency it just does not have anything at all and then it has got four gearbox options so there's a five speed manual for the lower variants there's a six speed manual for the top variants so the higher variants get the six speed manual of course and then there is a six speed amt and there's a six speed sorry seven speed dca dual clutch automatic i've got paddle shifters okay and i thought i'm going to get manual control of things it's always like drive control shift denied transmission warning and then second gear revving the nuts there it upshifts at 5500 rpm you know what bmw's diesel engines upshift at 5500 rpm how is a petrol engine upshifting so lower down the rev range i simply don't understand how is it happening and why is it happening and then there's a big fat traffic jam i'm actually confused this map is saying something else this map is saying something else why are they not in sync so yes although it looks cool and obviously nice but it really does not work as per expectations because i'm supposed to take a left now it's updated itself so it's a bit weird and uh, that's a bit of a bummer there at low speeds it's fine only thing that turbo lag is there it has this creep function so that's not an issue at all so it's going to creep at lower speeds to get you ahead move out of my way i'm coming and i'm surprised that tata motors has not put adas function in this car because they have put it in the safari and the harrier obviously it'll take the price higher but this car's chassis the ride and handling balance is so good it did not need any changes on that front 
it just rides so nice the ride and handling is actually fantastic only thing is low speed ride is not that great because of the slightly stiffer setup but once you speed up now it really smoothens out and look at the way it's able to take the worst of roads in its stride high speed stability is also decent only thing is this car really doesn't reach high speeds as such so i don't have to complain much on that front let me just change this camera view and yeah, i wish i could use a 360 degree camera now there are these rumbler strips here and there these roads are not the best and now i can actually hear the tire noise. noise so yeah i said insulation is good not really because i can feel the bumps and then there is this third and also suspension noise can also be heard inside this car i just wish the ergonomics were better yeah, i really don't like the ergonomics look at the position of the wiper control here and look at the position of the indicator control don't you think they're just too high up i feel like when it engage it should be that high up so create some bit of a confusion there obviously this works fantastically well how light is steering is this <laughs> okay obviously not hyundai light but still light enough very effortless car to drive only thing is the engine just does not have the ohm the engine doesn't have the grand 120 horsepower are there but i think few of them have gone on a vacation at the moment and you can see the color theme here right the color theme actually changes depending on the variant so lower variants get a different color theme and the surprising part is that the subwoofer is not there in the diesel why i don't know so they have actually mixed and matched equipment levels although i honestly feel more people should buy the diesel but then because of the high price the diesel people don't opt for the diesel people opt for the petrol and the petrol isn't that strong here come on tata motors bring that amazing engine quickly the direct injection which was showcased at the auto expo i think that's going to come in the curve paddles feel nice to hold yeah nice to press but everything is so slow with the gearbox with the engine the response and all now it really doesn't excite you honestly if you want exciting performance you need to get the diesel because this 1.5 liter diesel engine is just so much better it is so much more punch and trust me as you speed up the ride is so amazing yeah you occasionally hit that bump here and there but the ride is absolutely phenomenal and then this car feels quite please agile as well <laughs> <laughs> this lady was giving me some warning she shut herself up as soon as i pulled the handbrake so that's kind of fantastic let's actually change the drive mode so there are obviously three drive mode sport drive mode activated 69 in second okay so there are multiple oh my god the understeer is unreal in this car crazy understeer but like i was telling you there are multiple drive modes here three drive modes eco normal that is city and sport in city mode it's a mix oh my god this too much understeer even at lower speeds if you try to corner aggressively so now it's not very aggressive so we're going to come here and i'm going to change it to the power and torque meter change the view as well and left foot on the clutch right foot on the accelerator and we are going to rev the motor oh my god it becomes quite vocal revs till 4500 rpm at launch can't turn off traction control at all i don't know what has turned on here but okay let me leave the engine otherwise it will just blow up if i keep pressing it like that but i like this very cool bit here okay when i get into the settings menu actually quite cool how they have the display of the car so there's going to be ambient lighting look at this yeah that's kind of cool anyways into first gear air conditioning is off yeah it is off revving the motor 4500 rpm 4700 rpm off we go uh we spin and then it bogs down because traction control kicks in first gear 41 km per hour second is 69 like i've already told you and around the corners yeah it's decent enough yeah trust me it doesn't feel any heavier than the petrol in spite of the fact that this is a diesel you can pick it up in a higher gear as well engine is very vocal it revs decently quick for a diesel engine this is a 1.5 liter unit which produces you guessed it right 115 ps of power and the torque output is 260 newton meters and that's the reason it has got good amount of grunt that 260 newton meters of torque comes in at a low 1500 rpm turbo lag is very well contained here and the low end is good mid range is fantastic top end is completely lacking it doesn't have any grunt beyond 3 and a half 4000 rpm kind of feels breathless there and it reaches 100 km per hour in third gear 0 to 100 km per hour comes up in 2 and a half seconds faster than the petrol that is the level of grunt here 2 and a half seconds is a world of a difference trust me on it because this car obviously has around 90 newton meters more torque when compared to the turbo petrol engine only thing is the engine is very vocal but so is the turbo petrol engine so you're not really going to complain there i hit a bump and hazard lights turn on which actually brings me to the fact that 
this car has got a 12 volt charging socket at the rear also so there's one in the boot there's one near the seat rear seat so that you can plug in something here or there but surprisingly it misses out on a subwoofer i don't know what is tata motors logic that they're not offering subwoofer with the diesel they're offering it in the petrol in the dca they'll offer it in the amt as well no sense yeah honestly and then you know what because of the lack of subwoofer it does not have the jbl modes right here we're just going to turn on the camera because i can obviously so it misses out on that jbl mode as well and the sunroof is a bit of a glitch because smart key is out of range that sun blind now it does not open completely unless and until you open the complete sunroof so that's kind of funny making a quick overtake no problem at all into second gear there it pulls very nicely yeah this engine is really amazing especially when you drive the turbo petrol every time you hit a bump the hazard lights turn on the turbo petrol engine now is very lackluster but the diesel is really very nice i love it it's known as the revo torque of course has the grand has the punch feels pretty and is very efficient as well should return around 15 16 kilometers per liter quite easily coming across such water no problem at all feels slightly stiffer when compared to the petrol but overall ride is decent handling is good steering is nice brakes are okay they could be better and now i think i need to turn on express cooling because it's so hot okay it's open the window right now let's turn off the window so these small nifty nifty features which tata motors has given in this car really nice quite practicable the only thing is the gearbox has really long throws and it has this occasional notchy feel to it and the clutch is really very long so yeah the clutch pedal is quite long and deep but here we are in third gear and it feels decently tractable although i am on the verge of stalling no i'm not on the verge of stalling i've already stalled the car so we are turn it on right away Yeah, at low speeds it is smooth enough, but as you speed up now, obviously, it becomes a little uneasy. This car, which actually brings me to how Tata Motors is going to create a lot of confusion, like always, because the older Nexon was available, I think, in 60 variant. New one is also going to be available in around 40 freaking variants. So the base variant is only available with a 5 MT petrol me, and then the variant after that. One second, let me quick make a quick overtake. Overtaking and all is never a problem here. Yeah. Oh, there hit a bump again. Has a light turn on. What is the logic? Can actually turn off the air conditioning now because it's like sport mode plus sport mode because you're already in sport mode here. So eco mode is actually bearable right here. Sport mode is obviously more sprightly, gives you more punch and gives you more enthusiasm from the engine. There are three very different maps here. Talking about punch, there's a punch coming right ahead, which also needs a better engine because Tata Motors petrol engines are the ones which really disappoint. Considering this car is so well done in almost every regard. a better petrol engine would really win hearts but you have to pay rupees 1.83 lakhs more for the diesel when compared to the petrol which actually brings me to the range of this car price range it's going to start at rupees 10 lakhs somewhere around that go all the way to 18.65 lakhs for the top end variant considering all the bells and whistles and i'm estimating this price comparing it to what is the current price of the nexon without the facelift of course and the base variant does not even get a screen i think and lower variants get the smaller 7 inch screen high variants obviously get this screen and like i was telling you the colors also keep changing according to the variant which you opt for So I think lower variants get a black color theme and all. Now this actually looks nice. It's not in your eyes like the purple one. So some people will definitely like the purple one. But I'm happy with this particular color right now. Let's actually turn on the camera because we can. I love this blind view monitor. It's a bit laggy. The side cameras are not that great. Rear camera is actually quite nice. Cruise control turns on on its own. I don't know why it does that. And I'll show you how easy or difficult it is to take a U-turn. Now obviously stones and all nobody really cares about it because the uh, car is quite robust here. And there will I manage in one go? I will only if I manage to break some of those granite tiles or marbles or quartz yeah, into reverse or maybe porcelain. It's making the sound, <laughs> reverse sound, which is good. Now it actually gets stuck in reverse somehow. Rest of it is quite fine, honestly. Nothing much to complain about in that regard. Okay, we're doing a little bit water splashy. This is the only engine which I feel is the best from the Tata Motors lineup compared to all other engines because obviously the engines in the Harrier and Safari are not of Tata Motors' own. It comes from the FCA group. So yeah, this diesel engine. Oh my God, wheels spin randomly. Actually, ESP spoils the fun by kicking in and really uh, abruptly dulling down the performance. Obviously, in terms of safety, it will perform well. It got five star NCAP rating before. It should continue to get it because now it's got six airbag, and that Mahindra tractor has no patience today. Bumps. Yeah, it's just a little noisy through the bumps, but rest of it 
it's quite good yaar i really like it now there's no spike in power kick in the pants feel like was the case with the brazil diesel engine but then now we can't compare it because at least tata motors is still offering us a diesel engine which others are not offering now obviously kia and hyundai are still offering us a diesel engine in the venue and so on it respectively they are also offering us electric seats which are missing in this car but that's fine considering that 360 degree parking camera is the real highlight here and i quite like it i should also flash some lights Okay, time for the brake test and yeah, not very sure-footed brakes, yeah. Okay, let's get into first gear. Little bit of wheel spin here and there. So this car comes with three years, one lakh kilometer warranty. But come on, Tata Motors offer us unlimited kilometer warranty, which a lot of people are doing. Three years unlimited kilometer warranty is being offered by Hyundai right now. Maruti's warranty sucks at two years, forty thousand kilometers. So it's good. At least Tata Motors is offering a better warranty here, which matches with what Toyota actually offers. And I don't know why there's so much water on the road when the temperature is like thirty-three degree Celsius right now. This lady is too talkative. Express Are cooling off. Na, chup na, chup na, cooling shut up. On. Stop irritating me. And we are into first gear. 360 degree parking camera on 3D view on it looks super duper cool it doesn't really click at times now that's nice where is the sunroof though and why is the white color i don't understand oh my god that bike look like a ufo to me right now let me change the view here as soon as i do that if you notice this particular view has a blank here on the left that's actually for the gear position yeah gear position indicator is there instead of the tachometer in this view which is kind of useless and pointless so i'm going to turn on the tachometer into first gear revving the motor come on and off we go wheel spin here then box down of course and then on upshift nice wheel spin there as well this is the best power train option of this car without a freaking doubt i have no doubt about it and then you come across a corner you go you pull. please release yeah 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 you keep talking and keep irritating me so this is by far the best power train option of the nexon because this manual is just way better than the amt amt is convenient without a doubt but it's very slow with shifts and then has that head nod as well and i think there is a small traffic jam guys move so guys this is my vlog of the one second let me turn first please re <laughs> this is so much fun yaar i love the diesel if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel and don't forget to check out the this car please sliding like this and this lady is continuously saying some or the other nonsense so don't forget to check out this awesome car perfume from involve your senses this is the involve elements aura you can get yours with a 10% discount using coupon code fastbeam don't forget to click on the top right corner of the screen into first gear and here we please <laughs> this is absolute fun right now and here we go again please really <laughs> this is like a rally stage right now only thing is this lady should just stop talking to me for please no reason really. yeah yeah i shall release it <laughs> bye bye <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.